it's Tinma here. I am here to kick off my series on stuff I liked in Power Ranger seasons I didn't like. So here's me kind of going into being a bit positive into seasons I, I didn't care for or like that much. And I think I'm going to start my way with Wild Force. Here's the deal with Wild Force for me. I know why people don't like it. I personally think it's not a very good season. And if you like it, that's fine. That is fine. But I personally don't like it. And I know reasons why I don't like it. But <laughs> it is such a guilty pleasure for me. I, I'm not kidding. It really is my guilty pleasure season. I know why I don't like it. I know why a lot of people don't like it and think it's terrible. And it is the reasons why I think it's terrible, but at the same time, I can't help but watch this season every now and then. It's it's one of the seasons I will regularly go back to. Uh, I find that I regularly go back to it and I'm feeling kind of blue, you know? I, I just kind of like, I, I need to pick me up. I'll go back and watch this. Um, and that's, that's, <laughs> My confession with Wild Force that it really is just a guilty pleasure season and I think that's why I want to start off talking about it because there, there are things that I really like about that season and I wish that they, they could have done better it, you know it could have been a good season with all these things in it but instead it was um, it was Wild Force with, uh, you know, as I talked about in another video, it went with just not knowing what tone it wanted to take. Um, so I want to start off with, with kind of some, some, some shipper feels, I guess is what you would like to call it, shipper feels, um, using, using some Tumblr speak there. But, um, I'm going to start some stuff off with, uh, kind of the relationships that, that show up, both romantic and non-romantic in this season. And I'm, I'm gonna start off with um, with uh, Sh Princess Shayla and Merrick. And oh my God, I was way too invested in that. I, I really got mad that they, they broke up at the end. I'm like, what? No! No! But it made sense. And that's that's what I like about it is that they were kind of a take of the, of the night and you know, the princess story type type thing kind of the chivalry uh kind of kind of the chivalry there and um you know he he you know was you know he was from the original warriors he was the sixth one uh you know it was very implied you know they were kind of in love and had a thing and you know then he went and got all crucified so he could defeat master orc and uh and was kind of doomed to walk the earth well, you know, while the rest of them sealed Princess, uh, sh like, um, sealed Princess Shayla and put her in sleep for like a thousand years or something, you know, he was left to wander the earth as a, um, as a orc and, um, a, kind of the werewolf figure. He was left to just wander as a werewolf orc and where he, you know, trans, you know, where he would transform back and everything. Um, every, like, Full moon. I'm trying to remember, but uh, no, you know, and and, and they, they finally got you know they finally met up again, and it was so sweet. Like you know, you could you could see that one of the one of the finer actor acted moments in the season was you know their faces when they saw each other again, and you know they tried to restart from there, but because you know she was sealed away and he you know wandered the earth and just has this wandering broken spirit, they kind of would at times clash and. Um, and you just wanted to root for them, you know, to, to pull it together. Even though Shayla at times was like a little teenager, that one episode where she's over with with the with the deer zord and and the singing and all that, and she just blames it all on America. Well, Sparrow's playing and just gets all pissed at him. I'm like, damn, you are acting like a teenager and not like a thousand year old princess of sorts. You you are acting really immature about this. Gam yourself. So, you know, she, she, she did that and, um, and, you know, I kind of rooted for them. And then at the end, um, when she, you know, asked for his morpher back and basically just, just 
non-verbally states you're not coming with me when I'm going back to the Annermarium. The look on his face is just so like like there's there's heartbreak there, and it, it was it was a fairly nicely done like moment that you know you know of all, of all the acting that happened in that season that was a really nice moment, and you know he kind of he looked very heartbroken and she she kind of looked the same, and I was like oh, no no. So oh, I wanted it to end. Ah. So. <laughs> so yeah, no, I was, I was, oh, so upset by that. But at the same time, it made, it made sense. They grew apart as people, and um, and and thus it should not end happily. And I really like that. The fact, you know, looking at that from a storytelling perspective, I really like that. They went with that. Because, you know, you, you often see in, in American kid shows, guy gets girl and they end up happily ever after. It doesn't matter what age they are. If they were meant to be, they were meant to be. And to show that, no, that, that, that's not always the case. Even if the two people really do love each other, they might not be very compatible together. And, you know, and, you know, time awake does, you know, and, and certain things can make you grow as a, as a person in a different direction. You know, the Merrick she fell in love with you know, when he was being the knight, was a different person than when he was, you know, when he learned to live with being a cursed wolf and, you know, living his life like that. You know, that he grew as a different person and, in, you know, her being in slumber, I, I think, kept her in her old ways, but he moved on from them. So, very tragic love story. So let's talk about a happy one. A happy friendship story, which is Jindrax and Toxica. Oh my god, I, it's so funny being invested in the, in the villains of a piece, especially ones that kind of are a little bit more comic relief. Ha they're half comic relief, half kind, half dragon, because they did fulfill a little bit more of the Goldar role. So they're in their half comic relief and half, you know, Goldar. So, you know, um, so, you know, it's kind of weird where they stand, but at the same time, like, it was, they, their friendship was so awesome. Like, here are these two people that were very evil in, in everything, and they were, like, the best of friends. Because, you know, they lived, they, they, they lived with each other for, for years, waiting for Master Orc to return and everything. And they're like, okay, yeah. Woo, he's back. I don't like this dude. <laughs> and, you know, the, the whole discovery that he was, you know, really human... Um, who ate the Master Orc Seed and, and all that stuff. You know, that was a very, you know, where, where they investigated that. And then, you know, when they were betrayed by, you no, know, when they, they uh, summoned another you know, Orc to bring back another Orc, they ended up not liking that guy either because, you know, he was a douche. And, um, and there, there was a lot of, you know, they, they were, you know, so naive when, when it came to this power struggle. And then they, they ended up facing some consequences, you know, when um, Toxica, you know, cut off her horn and became human. And uh, she ended up dying. You know, it's like, oh, it doesn't grow back. And, you know, she died. And Drindrax was like, you know, sh shaken up by it. And he ended up, you know, going and um, going and uh, saving, you know, getting, getting her back. And, oh, it was, you know, and, and then when they, they got back, just, I was like, it was just like, yes, they, you know, when they reunited. And they also had, the, you know, very interesting talks. It was like, why are we doing this? It's it's because we're orcs, but, you know, we, we're not like them. We actually, you know, we want to see humans destroyed, but we, we don't want to go backstab each other, you know, it, you know, because it's just been us for so long. We've learned to be Hufflepuffs, essentially. <laughs> they're evil Hufflepuffs. You know, they, they're so loyal to each other. So, you know, we've learned to be like that. We don't want to backstab each other. And it was it was funny that because of those reasons, they ended up going with the with the Wild Force Rangers and helping them out. Because, you know, it's like we don't like our side anymore. So we want to we wanna change. And it, it was nice to see uh, villains actually changing sides. That more or less like 
came to those conclusions themselves. It wasn't like an evil spell was put over them at first and you broke it. No, it was just like we have come to those to, to that conclu conclusion. And therefore, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna switch sides. So you know, and then they ended up like walking off into the to to have adventures, and it was beautiful. And that was it was a very it was a very whether you ship it as a relationship and you're like wow you know I want you know I think of those two together, or if you look at it as a very deep bond, uh, a deep bonded friendship. Jindrax and Toxica are really, really fun to look at, and, and a, a very unique look at, at that type of thing. Just simply because, again, they were they were villains, and while they they did do this stuff with villains in the past, particularly Lost Galaxy was really known for all the drama that happened with the villains. In fact, I I, I I'd say this about Lost Galaxy: the villains were far more interesting, I think, than the Rangers themselves. And um, I'm sorry to those who lost like Lost Galaxy, but that's how I feel. That that's another topic entirely. We're talking about Wild Force. And then, um, but yeah, those were kind of the main relationships. There's another one, but I'm gonna kind of, but it's so brief and flash in the pan. I'm gonna go into it uh, uh, in a later topic in the video. So and and, he, and that that just spoiled right there. What 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 are the things I really liked about the season? So. But I want to get into that later. Um, but you know, I want to get, I want to just talk about a little bit about the story and how how interesting it was that they really tried to do those dark elements in there, and um, they were they were pretty dark on, on some of the stuff. Like like I'm like, damn, they actually did this. Um, and one of the things that I you know, Master Orc, uh, and his thing was was what drove him was jealousy. Um, I said it in an earlier video, I think, about, you know, how he became the villain that he did due to jealousy. And, you know, much like, um, much like in Time Force where the mo where the, the motivation was vengeance, uh, here was the motivation of jealousy. And, um, you know, he, he killed Cole's parents. He's consumed the seed so he could kill Cole's parents and Cole for essentially living the life he wanted to live with Cole's mother. It's like, you took the woman I love. You had a child with her. Now she is tainted by this. Um, I wanted that. And here's the thing. We never knew if Cole's mother liked him. We never knew. We never knew if Dr. Evans or Mrs. Evans, I'm gonna go Dr. Evans. The ever liked him and he became master orc and you know killed wanted to kill humanity all, all out of jealousy and that that's actually a really kind of dark turn for for a show that tries to not do that it tries and it will do it at times but that's, that was a very huge thing to do again you know mixed in a season that was inherently goofy um was that was that little bit of darkness which you know tipped it a little bit too much because it's like you were so goofy and then you had something that punchy in it i'm like dang 